Uh, when did you learn that Congressman Moulton and Congressman Meyer had traveled to Afghanistan? And, and is that what prompted your letter instructing members not to travel to the region? When did I learn? Uh, around the same time, a little before it was in the public domain. I'll tell you why um, it wasn't in the public. We didn't make it known because it would be dangerous for them. So a matter of hours, but still until they were airborne, it would not have been uh, safe for them. Uh, the Secretary of Defense, Secretary of State, th there's a real concern about members being in the region. And so uh, with the, shall we say, uh, shall we say, knowledge of the Secretary of, the, of Defense as to what the risk would be to these members, A, the re resources necessary to facilitate their visit and to protect them was an opportunity cost of, of what we needed to do to be evacuating as many people as possible. So it's not just about them going to Afghanistan, we're not even going to the region because there's a call on our resources diplomatically, uh, militarily and the rest uh, in the region as well. So this, this is deadly serious. So we do not want members to go. So you're disappointed in them specifically? You wish they hadn't gone? We I haven't heard what they're, you know, in other words, let me just say, I think my letter speaks for itself in terms of you sh people shouldn't be going there. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. Yes, ma'am. Well, just on that front, I mean, have you spoken to them since? Their no, I haven't. Visit? I don't know. I guess they're back now. Are they? I haven't spoken to them since, no. Do you see their trip as a distraction? I don't think this is so much of a distraction. I mean, the point is, is that we didn't want anybody to think this, this was a good idea and that they should try to follow suit. Uh, again, I haven't, I've been busy. It's an important thing. We wanted to make sure they were safe for themselves, but also for what consequences could flow, a ramification if something happened to them uh, while they were there. So they have to make their own case as to why they went and this or that. But it is, uh, uh, it was not, in my view, a good idea. Do you and to speak with them then? We'll see. We'll see. But, I mean, there, there are other, uh, they have their committees. See, when you, when you go, I'm sure this is not just like, um, I think I'm going to go to Afghanistan. You need the, so the approval of your committee chair uh, in order to do that. And we've put out the word to committee chairs. There ain't going to be no planes or this or that for, for, for people going to the region or any facilitation. See, the Defense Department has to protect, but the State Department has to facilitate. Really? We're trying to get people out? So again, uh, uh, without having a fuller knowledge of, I, I don't think they had any committee approval. I, I don't know that. I don't know what happened on the Republican side, but my understanding is they didn't have committee approval on on the Democratic side. But in any event, it, you know, interesting. I don't, I don't think a major distraction because we put an end to any thought that anybody was going there right away. Well, do you think the Secretary and I guess the Department at large find it helpful for two lawmakers to come to Kabul unannounced? Or were you guys aware of it? And do you find it very helpful for them to be there? We were not aware of this visit. Uh, and we are obviously not encouraging VIP visits uh, to uh, a very tense, dangerous, and dynamic situation at that airport and inside uh, Kabul uh, generally. Uh, and the secretary, I think, would have appreciated the opportunity to have had a conversation before the visit took place. Just how disruptive was it having them there? It, they they got a chance to uh, to talk to uh, commanders, as I understand, and got a chance to, to talk to troops. Uh, but uh, to say that uh, there wasn't a need to flex and to um, to alter the day the day's flow, including uh, including you know the need to have protection for these members of Congress uh, that would. Uh, you know that that wouldn't be a, that wouldn't be a genuine thing for me to, to, to assert. I mean, there was there was certainly um, there was certainly a, a a pull off of the kinds of missions we were trying to do to be able to accommodate that visit. But just to be clear, Congressman Moulton and Congressman Meyer 
they took seats that would have been for refugees leaving and they took time away from the mission? They certainly took time away from what we had been planning to do that day. Um, and uh, uh, I, I don't know uh, on the aircraft. They did fly out uh, on a military aircraft. I, I honestly don't know um, what the seat capacity was on that, that aircraft. Uh, but, they are, but they are out of the country now. Barb. You said that you are discouraging members from going to Afghanistan, but you also said you understand the frustration of, of Congressman Moulton and Congressman Meyer. Um, you know, that is part of the justification that they are giving, that they're frustrated with the inability to conduct oversight from over here with the shaky intelligence. Uh, are, are you concerned that some of your more, I want to say, impressionable members are going to take <laughs> you saying that you understand this frustration no. as, as subliminal encouragement to, to make these No, I, I, I just watched Speaker Pelosi answer that question. I think that's the most time she spent on Afghanistan all week. And it offended me. It offended me as an American. She spent her time to criticize somebody. Look, they shouldn't go. But these people are veterans. You know what they came when they got called back here? I talked to Peter Meyer a couple different times. I'll show you the text that he sent me was working to get people out. That's, that's what his time. He was frustrated. You know how many calls I would get about the State Department they won't answer? I got an interpreter I worked with. Their families, they're, they're stuck inside a house. They don't know that they can go out. Or an American family, and they're frustrated as a member of Congress trying to help these individuals, getting nowhere in sight. And they come back to Congress, called back in a special, and all they spend their time on is $5 trillion. Did you talk to Meyer during the trip? No. He said it was no, no, no. This was prior. I, I knew nothing of Meyer taking. Meyer never talked to me about the trip, never asked my opinion, never asked for approval. Have you talked to him? No, I have not. For not getting the, the, approval before he went? Huh? Would he face any sort of discipline for not getting approval before he went and to, in fact, discourage other ones who might have a notion to go? Now? I don't think others really have the opportunity to go since everything's being pulled out. And I don't think it's smart for others to go. You put yourself, not, not yourself in harm's way, but you're putting Americans in harm's way if the military has to protect you, in which they will do and they should not. Leading a question about lawmakers who traveled to Afghanistan. Sure. Was the White House aware of those members of Congress that traveled to Kabul? Uh, we were not aware when they were en route. No. What's your What's the White House's reaction to that trip? Was Was it beneficial, or what's the White House's reaction? Well, our, our guidance continues to be to all American citizens, including elected officials. Uh, this is not the time to travel to Afghanistan, and our focus, our objectives, our resources need to be. Uh, laser focused on uh, evacuating Afghan uh, partners, evacuating American citizens, and that's uh, best done in the hands of the Department of Defense and State Department professionals who are on the ground. One more. 